sunlight is bright, I have a hard time seeing it. <laughs> into the rest of the sanctuary. Welcome. I'm glad you are all here this morning. Um, if you've got a bulletin, I hope someone also handed you a sparrow ornament on the way in. If you didn't get one, make sure you get one after the service, because that is part of our theme for Advent. This is the third Sunday of Advent, during which we're going to be focusing on joy. And today we will once again utilize and draw inspiration from our Advent devotional uh, created by Salt Project that's entitled The Dawn Chorus, an Advent devotional on the wonders of birds. And if you haven't gotten a copy of that, there's some on the back uh, seat shelf back there too, so take one of those home with you if you don't have one. As we journey through these four weeks of Advent leading up to Christmas, we gather together to listen and sing straight into the deepening, deepening darkness, pro proclaiming that in the end, the night will give way to the day and winter will give way to spring. Despair gives way to hope. War to peace, grief to joy, violence to love, and Jesus will come again with light, peace, and healing in his wings. That is the meaning of Advent. You'll notice that Jen isn't with us this morning. Um, she was potentially exposed to COVID during the week, and so she is choosing to isolate at home. But we do have a sermon on video from her that she supplied for us, so we'll be uh, having that sermon a little bit later in the service. Our office administrator, Jelani, fell ill in the middle of the week and tested positive for COVID. So um, we are carrying on this week. Uh, that's what we're doing. And I think between the three or four of us that are involved in the service, we will be able to uh, put it together here. Uh, call attention to the bulletin. The first hymn is from the um, New Century Hymnal, the black one, and the rest of the hymns today are from the United Methodist Hymnal. We should have those in the pew in front of you. <clears throat> So again, welcome. I would invite you to reflect on how God might have been present in your life during this past week and uh, what kind of things that happened in your life that might have brought you joy and uh, brought you appreciation for God's presence, which is always with us, which we sometimes forget to acknowledge or to remember. Are there any other announcements that I need to make? So we will now have the lighting of our Advent candle. Can we ring the bell now? Ah, good idea. Thank you. I, I should follow the bulletin here. Well, it says lighting of the Advent candle first, but I don't care which order it is. <laughs> Today we light three candles. The candle of hope, the candle of peace, and the candle for this third week of Advent, the candle of joy. As we prepare to light today's Advent candles in the sanctuary, I invite those who will be viewing online to join us by preparing to light your own candles. Today, today the flame of the candle of joy reminds us of the joy that Jesus brings into this world and his presence with us. Jesus said, until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, so that your joy may be complete. Please pray with me. Oh God, as we light the third candle of Advent, we ask for your mercy and a joyful new beginning.
Jesus Christ in body or in spirit. God comes, so don't let go of all the reasons to rejoice. We will, we will sing, sing the song of heaven, heaven to the one who fills our lives with joy. God comes, so don't stop lifting your prayers with thanksgiving. We will sing the song of heaven to the one who hears our prayers. God comes, so don't stop singing. We will sing a song of heaven to the one who graces us with the peace and joy we cannot begin to understand. Come, let us worship together
scripture reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 35, 1 to 2a. And you can find it on the back of your bulletin if you wish to read along. It's a long one. <laughs> the wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. May God bless our understanding of these words. Good morning. I so wish I could be there with you in person. And I'm grateful for all of those who are helping out today to make this service possible. And so glad that I can join you this way at least and, and share um, with you from our Advent devotional and from my study uh, this week with, with God and, and what God has placed on my heart to share with you today. I invite you to bow your heads with me for prayer. Oh God, as we spend this time together looking at the scripture reading considering what is in our Advent devotional, I ask that you will just speak through me today. Help us to hear what you would have us to hear and to apply it into our own lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Advent devotional describes that before dawn, the sounds of nature are often still and quiet. It is a time when those things that live and function at night are usually settling in for the day. And the daytime life has not yet stirred. At that moment, it is almost like a hush before the coming of the dawn. And as the faint blush of the new day becomes apparent on the horizons, on the horizon, the sounds of the morning slowly begin to be heard. Soon those sounds become a beautiful symphony that is a song of joy, praising God and God's creation. Every morning that sound can be heard. But as our devotional emphasizes, too often and too many people become too caught up in the affairs of the world to even hear such blessings. Poet Mary Oliver captures this concept well in her poem entitled, I Worry. This is her poem. I worried a lot. Will the garden grow? Will the rivers flow in the right direction? Will the earth turn as it was taught? And if not, how shall I correct it? Was I right? Was I wrong? Will I be forgiven? Can I do better? Will I ever be able to sing. Even the sparrows can do it. And while I am hopeless, is my eyesight fading or am I just imagining it? Am I going to get rheumatism, lockjaw, dementia? Finally, I saw that worrying had come to nothing and I gave it up. And I took my old body and I went out into the morning and sang, Jesus also utilized examples from nature when he spoke about our human tendency to worry and to focus on the unknown of the future and things that are out of our control. When this happens and situations pull us into cycles of worry, Jesus encourages us 
to shift our focus away from our perception of the circumstances and the unknown that tomorrow holds. And Jesus encourages us instead to look at the birds of the air. For Jesus pointed out, although they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet God feeds them. And not just the birds, Jesus urges. Look at all of the reminders available to us in nature that reveal God's ongoing provision and care for all creation. As another example, Jesus suggests, consider the lilies of the field. They neither toil nor spin, and yet look how beautifully and majestically they have been clothed by God. To make sure that we understand his point, Jesus took this moment to emphasize every individual is worth at least as much as these birds and flowers. Jesus continued by posing the following question. If God takes the time to clothe the, clothe the grass of the field, even though its life cycle lasts but a short season of time, won't God also take care of all of your needs for the duration of your lifetime? Jesus added that when we prioritize our relationship with God and we focus on how we can partner with God to infuse light into places and lives gripped by joy-depleting circumstances, that all the hope and peace and joy and love that this light represents will also be infused into our own life circumstances as well. For as Jesus promised, he came so that we might all have abundant life. Go ahead, Jesus encourages, ask in my name for whatever you need as you seek to live out my teachings. And when you do, you will receive whatever you ask for so that your joy may be complete. Today's scripture reading describes that the wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. Why will this happen? The passage continues by declaring the hope-filled, peace-giving, and joy-infused news that the wilderness and dry land and the desert will be filled with joy and song and that this arid land will be transformed with an abundance of life-affirming blossoms, because they shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. This passage continues by describing the very human experience that is also associated when we encounter the awe-inspiring, life-giving, and joy-producing glory and majesty of God, the one who will strengthen weak hands and make firm the, knee, the feeble knees, the one who will say to those who have a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear, 
Here is the one who will come and save you. And when Jesus comes, the passage in Isaiah continues, then the eyes of the blind will be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless will sing for joy. And everlasting joy shall be upon their heads and they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. This is what Jesus' coming offers to each of us. When we put our hopes and trust in that, how can we not keep from singing? Even into what by earthly standards might seem the darkest of nights. Every day, we have a choice about what will hold our attention. The worries of this world and the unknown of tomorrow, or the invitation to find fullness of life through Jesus, which is available to every single person, to everyone who is willing to open themselves to the sanctuary that Jesus offers to our weary and worried hearts, minds, and souls. When we choose what Jesus offers, in turn, we have the opportunity each new morning to join the dawn chorus who regardless of darkness or circumstances is capable of bringing encouragement and joy to anyone who is waking to troubling and heartbreaking news. Not because we are untouched or uncaring, but because Jesus has promised to see us through whatever situation we are going through. Vivian Bricker writes that it is possible for a person to have joy without feeling happiness. Life circumstances might result in our sadness. However, Bricker emphasizes that when we choose to set our hearts and minds on Jesus and to faithfully trust in him, joy will resonate in our hearts. Bricker continues by acknowledging that joy and peace can seem like tough things to feel and to experience in the present sufferings of this world. But she reminds us, we have the ongoing assurance that the God who is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow is ready to fill us with joy and peace whenever we place our trust in God and trust God with all the details of our lives and circumstances. Jesus did not promise to take us out of hard times, but he did promise to walk alongside us and to bless us with joy and peace as we faithfully trust in him. And not just any joy and peace, but one that is deeply soul-filling, one that is beyond anything that we can comprehend all on our own. In a national 
Geographic Society article, Arthur Allen poignantly describes that the song Sparrow is known to repeat its cheerful melody as many as 300 times an hour. Research, in fact, has shown that a song Sparrow's melody is unique with each bird, each song sparrow, singing an individual variation of the general song sparrow pattern. Each one has its own unique pattern of the song, just a little variation that's unique to it. Again, this reminds me of Jesus' use of the Spirit <coughs> to emphasize God's care for all creation. And that God is also personally aware of every detail about who we are as individuals. Author Diana Wells notes that by the time of Jesus, the ubiquitous house sparrow was so abundant in Palestine that the disciples were told that two sparrows could be bought for one farthing. In today's terms, that's about a quarter of a penny. Two sparrows for about a quarter of a penny. Or they could buy five for two farthings. With this in view, Jesus emphasized that no matter what value is placed on these little birds by humans, not a single sparrow is considered less than to God. And that God keeps count of each in every one of these sparrows. And just like that, Jesus points out just the way that God is aware of these little sparrows and what happens to them. God also knows the very numbers of hairs on each of our heads. God knows and cares about the details of each of us as individuals. God knows the variation of our songs and what's going on in our lives. In preparation for this sermon, and as I looked at our devotional and I read the different things about birds and passages where Jesus utilizes them in his own teachings, couldn't help but envision our church as a community of birds. And specifically, I had this in mind as I reflected on the following question that we must ask ourselves. What do our individual and collective songs reveal about the difference we believe that Jesus is coming into our lives and into this world makes possible. What do our individual and collective songs reveal about the difference we believe that Jesus is coming into our lives and into this world makes possible. Pastor John Vandelar asserts that joy is seldom recognized for the incredibly restorative, liberating force that it is. However, Pastor John notes that when we dance and sing, and we draw others into the celebration. 
we become life givers. And we become reflections of the light Jesus' coming offers. And we have the opportunity in those moments to become a part of that incredibly restorative and liberating gift that Jesus offers. And so along with Pastor John, I say let's fill our sanctuary. Let's fill our homes and our community and our world with singing and celebration this week and beyond. And let's rediscover the healing power of joy as we wait together for Jesus' arrival. And as we do this, as we anticipate Jesus' coming, let us also risk opening ourselves to the deep and soul-filling joy that only Jesus can provide. A joy that will overflow from our very beings because it cannot be contained within our comfort zones or within the four walls of any building. We must anticipate this joy. We must encourage each other to look for it. And we must be courageous and risk being transformed by the deeply empowering, life-sustaining, and counter-cultural joy that Jesus offers. A transformation that will reveal the joy Jesus offers permeates everything that we do, everything that we say, every interaction that we have. It will reinforce that joy can be known in this world. That is the kind of transformation that Jesus offers a joy that is possible even in this world. A kind of joy that will continually draw us to join Reverend Rachel Hackenberg in proclaiming, always your goodness surprises me. Yet there it is again and again. A moment in a rocking chair. A long laugh with a friend. Always your grace surprises me. Yet there it is again and again. A renewed strength, a sigh of release. Forever your faithfulness surprises me. Yet there it is again and again a song, a presence, again and again my Savior, again and again my Jesus. Amen and amen. May the God of hope fill you all with joy and peace as you trust in God, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
joys and concerns. And um, Pastor Jen um, informed me uh, recently that Lynn Gertzenbach had fallen earlier this past week and fractured her pelvis. She had surgery for that, and her husband Tim reported that the surgery went well. So for Lynn's um, fracture and surgery and her recovery, we say together, Lord, hear our prayers. Are there other joys and concerns you'd like to share this morning? morning. Um, I have a concern. Um, I was notified on Friday that my best friend um, of 30 some years um, was diagnosed with stage 3 lung cancer. Um, and we found out Saturday that it's metastasized to her brain and they're giving her three to six months. So I would just ask for prayers for Jane and her family, um, which is we're blindsided by it, so thank you. So her prayers for Janie? Yes. Mm -hmm. Let us say, Lord, hear our prayers. I was reflecting this week, uh, or today, I was reflecting today and earlier this week on the sparrows. Um, many months ago, uh, and to uh, entertain our cats, we put uh, bird feeders outside the backyard catio and the front yard catio where they sit, like to sit. Um, so that they had a little cat TV and a little entertainment with the birds. And I've kept those bird feeders filled up and I've come to really enjoy watching them myself. At this time of year, um, most of the pretty ones are gone somewhere else. And I've noticed lately an abundance of sparrows and other little brown and gray birds, nuthatches and some other ones. But it's just those little those little sparrows watching them hop around and pick up the seeds or um, take them from the bird feeder until a bigger bird comes along and they fly away. It, it's just always such a joy to watch. Um, and I was <laughs> observing yesterday or the day before that they look a lot like the little there's one species of sparrow that looks so much like the little ornament that I made, the same colors and everything. It's really cool to see that. So just, again, the joy of little birds that hop around and do their thing. So for the joy of sparrows and watching them, we say, thanks, thanks be to God. And um, I also want to express my joy um, I've been singing literally all of my life. I was born knowing how to sing. I was born being able to hear harmonies. It's always been my, it was my first thing I could ever do, even before. Um, it was such a joy to be in a big choir, singing with the orchestra last weekend, and such really awesome music that's been in my head all week with no place else to sing it again. <laughs> but it, I cannot begin to express the joy I feel in in singing and making music. So for the joy of singing, we yeah. say mm -hmm. thanks be to God. God. And uh, I think probably Jean and I also yeah. have had that same music <laughs> running around in our heads all week after spending a semester working on it and singing with the Ukiah Symphony. It was great. Well, it was a joy to me this morning to see the sun come out after all that wonderful rain this weekend. I was a little surprised. And uh, when you're driving south, there's a lot of glare on the road when it's wet, but uh, it would be better going home. Was there snow? Did you see snow? I did, not no I did not notice snow on the hills, but I suspect that there was some. So, for the rain, 
I say and we say, thanks be to God. Are there joys and concerns? If not, I would invite you to spend a few moments in silent prayer and then I will uh, read the pastoral prayer that Jen has provided for us today. giver of joy. Thank you that we are made for joy and that Advent reminds us of this. Help us wait in hopeful anticipation for the gift of joy that Jesus' arrival offers to each of us. Even now, O oh God, we are waiting for joy in a world that is too often bleak and cheerless. So we pray, give joy this week even in the midst of illness, through a keen sense of your presence. Provide joy in the midst of grief, through an awareness of love deeper than death, and infuse joy into the midst of anxiety, through sudden fleeting moments of beauty. We are grateful that even in this barren earth, that you promise to cause joy to bubble up. Move us, God, to joy. Take our hands and lead us in your dance of creation. When we are uncertain, guard our hearts with your peace. When our steps falter, surround us with the strength of your spirit and guide us, dancing God, until we are moved and can sing with the joy of your salvation. We pray this all in the name of Emmanuel, God with us who taught us to pray, saying, Our Creator, Creator who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, be done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.
bring are valued and appreciated when we give generously and accept gratefully. All are blessed. Thank you. 